Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, on this blessed Sunday, make us worthy to praise your resurrection with pure hearts and clear consciences. With all the children of your holy church, we glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the good and merciful Lord, who in his compassion came down to us and became flesh. He chose to taste death to save us, and he descended to the realm of the dead. By his resurrection he gave joy to his disciples and gave light to the nations with the light of his salvation. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Word of God, who can adequately praise you for your, the depth of your compassion, and what voice can bless you, for you are above all praise. Neither mind nor tongue can describe the wonders you accomplished on Sunday, the day of your resurrection from the dead. And so with the psalmist David we cry out, This is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice in it and be glad. Now, Christ, we our God, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense, which we offer to you to forgive our sins, give peace of mind to those in distress, and comfort to those who are anxious. Bring back those who are far and watch over those who are near. Guide the shepherds, sanctify the priests, and purify the deacons. Pardon all sinners and guard the righteous, protect orphans and help widows. Drive away conflicts and put an end to all dissension. Remember the faithful departed and grant them the rest in your heavenly kingdom, that with them we may celebrate that eternal feast. We raise glory to you, to your blessed Father, and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Lord, accept the sweet fragrance of our incense and make us worthy to announce your resurrection with the angels, to proclaim it with your women disciples and to rejoice in your victory with your pure apostles. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Kaddishat, aloha, kaddishat, chayatono kaddishat, lama yaloto. Shout with joy from the mountain, Sunday is a feast so great. Offer praise to the Lord God, and with angels celebrate. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and your children forever. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body though are, are one body, so also is Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. <clears throat> From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Lord Jesus says, Behold, I send you as a sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But beware of men, for they shall hand you over to courts, they shall scourge you in their synagogues, and they, you will be led before governors and kings for my sake, as a witness before them and before the pagans. When they hand you over, do not be anxious about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say, for it shall not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and father his child. Children shall rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name. But whoever perseveres to the end shall be saved. When they persecute you in this town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you shall not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. No disciple is above his rabbi, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his rabbi, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the household Beelzebul, then how much more those of his household? This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Behold, I send you as sheep among the wolves. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This gospel has been read last Sunday, all of last week, and this Sunday also. It's still just chapter 10 of the Gospel of St. Matthew. But it's fascinating, because if you recall last Sunday, with the choosing of the 12, they, when they are sent out to prepare the pathway of our Lord, they are told, do not go among the pagans and do not go into the towns of Samaria, but go only to the lost sheep of Israel. So that's why in the contrast, what is unusual here is now this second section 
It's why for the fathers and the interpreters, this is a second apostle that actually takes place after our Lord's death and resurrection. So what St. Matthew has done often happens in the Gospels, depending upon the author, is you will take different events or teachings and put them together in the same place because there's a relation between them. So the calling of the 12 last week and the sending out among to find and to stabilize the lost sheep of Israel is obviously related to the second apostolate that takes place after Pentecost. And here we see that because not only do you talk about pagans here as being a witness before the pagans, but they're also told you will be drawn up before courts and before kings, before governors. There's a plurality here. It's not just Israel that's being spoken of. So we have two things that are being juxtaposed together. One was the immediate preparation for the teaching of our Lord in all the towns and villages around Israel. That was the 12 going out. Then we have juxtaposed this other section, which is much more dramatic. That's why our Lord says, I send you as lambs among the wolves. And remember, wolves hunt in packs. So he's also saying is, you will be ganged up on. It will not just simply be one-on-one. -on -one. He's not saying <clears throat> in the inevitability when the gospel enters into the pagan world, <clears throat> And those who do not know the gospel, those who do not embrace the gospel, for them the gospel is shattering. This message of death and life and the healing of mankind causes that world to go into convulsions. We've talked about that in context of the book of Revelation. It's why you have all this drama in the apocalypse. Apocalypse just means unveiling, but the unveiling of God's plan causes that world around it, which is still wounded by sin, to be unreceptive to that message of God's healing redemption. And therefore, one thing it does, even regardless of itself, is it goes into convulsions in response to it. Think about the kind of horrors of some of these medical procedures, the uh, electroshock or something. The whole body will go into this reaction. This is the message of the gospel. This is the healing of humanity. And so the world goes into convulsions by its presence. That's why this is dramatic. But it's also worse because there are people who positively choose not to receive the gospel. They hate it. And those people, they will hunt you down in packs. They will find you because you bring a message that they do not want. And that's what our Lord, when he says, I send you as lambs among wolves. But he tells them to be as wise as serpents and as simple, guileless as doves. Now we know that phrase. Everyone quotes this phrase. It's one of those famous New Testament quotations out of totally out of context pop up. What our Lord is saying is here is he's saying, be perspicacious. Notice things. Pay attention. And he's telling them, perceive what is going on around you, and in the simplicity of the doves, fly away. Avoid it. Do not have to go into confrontation. Explain to those who are of goodwill, and to those who are not of goodwill, leave them. Remember earlier in this gospel, he says, when you come to a home, if there is a Bar Shlomo, a son of peace that lives here, your blessing, your peace will rest upon this family. If not, it will return to you. And he says, if a town or a village does not accept you, then when you leave that village, you shake the very dirt off of your shoes as a sign of their rejection. I leave even your dirt with you. So our Lord is pretty dramatic on these things, but to be as guileless as doves means to be attentive, watch, be wise, see what's happening, and elude. That's why immediately after this section, he says that you will not accomplish, that if they persecute you in this town, flee, go to another town. There are not enough towns in Israel in existence before the Son of Man comes. He's not talking about the end of the world. The Son of Man in his kingdom, you will find your refuge 
within the church, within the kingdom. And the Son of Man will be there to assist you. Which is why he also says to them, don't be anxious. He's not giving them a modern cliche of just, you know, it's cool, just ride it along. None of these things are one of these let go, let God things, which just like turns my stomach. They're not cliches. But he's telling us why you should not be anxious. It's because God himself is present with you. And the spirit of your father will speak. It's not you who have to give a reasoning before the judges and the governors and the kings. God is with you. This is not about you. This is about the gospel. This is about God. Steve and I were talking the other day and we came up in the question saying, well, yes, we understand they're wrong and we're right. No, that's not the teaching of the Catholic Church. We, we're nothing, we're lambs. Lambs, by definition, are stupid. They may be cute and cuddly, and you see them on Easter cards, but they're dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. Okay. So it's not about they're wrong, we're right, or anything. It's about they're wrong because the gospel and the revelation of God is right. And we just happen in this generation to have been asked to embrace this healing gospel and have done so, apparently, because you're here. It's not about me or you being right. It's about the fact that we have been shown a mercy to belong to the revelation of God. And that's why when you shake the soil, the very dust off of your shoes, walking out of this village that's rejected you, it's not about a personal thing. It's about this is left even to you to the day of judgment because you have refused the prescription and the healing of God. It's all yours. Keep it all. It's not about them and us, but it is about them and God. And that's why he says, don't be anxious. This isn't about you being eloquent before the courts or to give witness or testimony before others. Because the spirit of your father will speak for you and speak within you. When you read the lives of the saints, especially the early martyrs in the church, you see this all the time. You know that many of the Roman martyrs that we have, the stories that are told, they're a bit embellished during the Middle Ages, but the foundational dialogues that take place between the judges and these individuals are based upon the court reports. They had court reporters just like we had the stenographers and court reporters. They had the same thing. Most of those records have been lost, obviously, but many of them were retained and they had access to them at the time. So I highly recommend to you the book by Giuseppe Ricciotti. He's an Italian priest who wrote in the mid 20th century. He has a book called The Age of Martyrs, in which it's a very good, profound historical book while simultaneously necessarily being the lives of the saints, but it's primarily a historical book in which he points out very clearly these dialogues, these answering, these 12-year-old girls in front of judges and the responses that they give. St. Catherine of Alexandria as a young woman, another example. This speaking of the spirit of the Father is because this is all about God's healing, not about us. Which is why you'll notice at the beginning of this section of the gospel today, he says, after I send you as lambs among wolves, be wise, be attentive, be perceptive, and guileless as doves. He says, but beware of men. Beware of men. Be cautious of what goes to the heart of men. Men meaning the generic men, of course. Human beings, beware. Remember in the Gospel of St. John, there's a very beautiful section in which after our Lord has been teaching, a lot of the people come up and they go, that was awesome, that was really terrific, that's beautiful. And St. John tells us in an aside, none of that meant at anything at all to our Lord, all this praise. But he adds, because he knew what was in the heart of man. That knowledge of human nature, that knowledge of the human person, the depth of our depravity at times because we are manipulative and hypocritical. And that's what he means when he says, beware of men. 
and be attentive to what you do in bringing this message. That's why he says, brother against brother, father against his children, children rising up against their parents. None of this is a happy picture. But this is the message of the gospel entering into the world. This is why many of you, as you progress in the path of the Catholic life, you find that you have less and less and less discussable matter with the pagans that you know or work with. It's not because you hate them or they hate you. You just don't have anything else to discuss because your world is totally transformed and different. And so this is a very beautiful gospel because at the end of it, it's just the immediate quotation that would actually follow this verse 25 that we had read today, or 23 or whatever it is, 25. He says, therefore, after all of this has been described, he says, therefore, having told you beware of human beings, of men in the beginning, after this whole section of parents and brothers and mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws and the betrayal from the very household that we live in, he says, therefore, because it is the kingdom of the Son of Man who comes to you, because it is the spirit of your Father who speaks within you, he finishes this whole section, he says, therefore, do not be afraid of them. Have no fear. That is the magnificent message of the gospel. And as always, I encourage you to read this whole chapter 10 of St. Matthew and meditate it on during this week. Verse by verse, look at it front ways, read it, look at it from behind, look at it from the top, look at it from the bottom. To be able to assimilate that profound message of be cautious, be wise, be guileless, but in the end, even if they drag you before courts, have no fear of them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. One God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
we confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Iterot madem heid aloho, alot aloho dem pare kayu. Heinu tsugo taibu to keyu nal baito fuesku dem hayek no hod kuhure shofa. Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Samson. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers, our mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
We continue on page 754, the Anaphora of 12 Apostles, 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and only Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. O holy altar of God, peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you, peace to you, O minister of God, peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith which is pleasing to God. peace and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever Amen. O Lord we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies that we may raise glory and thanks to you, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify and proclaim. Shanto, O Barahu Kodesh, 
Vaxunya bil talmita karamara Sabahul mene kul khun Khunu demita Fagru dim Dakhlu khaykun wakhlaf sagiyem Meta khusayu metihem Khusunya khame wa khayir al-alam alameen Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, with blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the people here before you. Excuse me. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders throughout the world, that they may always stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Samson. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice, calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to attain mercy, to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. And we're so proud to the departed and forgive the sins we have committed with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, it's now and shall be Passionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, 
be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness and to call upon you saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us, for yours is the kingdom, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and be made holy we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity eternal and consubstantial be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for the life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. Lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and for the glory of your holy name, and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name. For we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. <clears throat>